Theater presents Gene Lockhart and Pat Crowley. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Wind is No Gentleman, starring Gene Lockhart. And here is your hostess, Pat Crowley. Thank you, Larry Chatterton. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Wind is No Gentleman, starring Jean Lockhart as Avery McLemore. This is my story, and it was mighty strange. Maybe you read about it in your newspaper, or heard about it on your radio or television. But if your life wasn't affected by it, man, you must have been living in a hole with the top pulled down over you. I'm talking about the big calm, naturally, when the wind stopped blowing. And just about the whole world was in one whale of an uproar. Of course, the whole thing really began when Miss Keaton was a little girl, but I didn't know her then. I've only known her since I can to live in a boarding house, oh, 10, 12 years ago. But she used to tell me about the beginnings of it. More coffee, Mr. McLemore? Well, if you'll just put a little shade just around the bottom of the cup, hmm? Obliged. The whole wash, every sock, pillowcase, sheet. I was about ready to lose my mind. I reckon. Just picked up the whole clothesline and dropped it on the ground. All my life it's plagued me, Mr. McLemore. Mm-hmm. Since I was a little tot with curls down to here. Blew me into the fish pond on my sixth birthday. Yeah. Oh, I wish you could have seen me with my pretty little party dress. Mm, you told me about it. No respecter of persons. Just seemed to pick me up and throw me in. Ruined the dress my mother worked on so hard. And been after you ever since. Ever huh? since. Yeah. If I wait at a bus stop, the wind starts blowing. Mm. If I plant a tree, the wind breaks off the branches before they can bear. And when I die, it'll, it'll probably, probably blow, blow the grass, grass right off my grave. grave. <clears throat> well, I suppose you get tired of hearing me prattle about the way I feel about the wind, Mr. McLemore, but don't you think it's just a little strange? Yes, ma'am, I sure do. <laughs> And it was strange. Sure, she she used to prattle a good deal about how she hated the wind, and the way it looked to me, she had a case. The wind had given her a bad time. Why, there was that time, kind of a nasty day it was, and the wind tried to humiliate her right in front of the colonel. He, he just moved into the big house next door. Mr. McLemore? Yes, ma'am? I'm going down to the grocery. I was wondering if you'd mind coming along to help with the carrying. Well, I'm glad to. Let me put on the coat. Uh, Want me to help Miss Keating? No, I don't think so, Mary. The two of us should be able to handle it. Oh, uh, isn't that new? Mm, New umbrella. Kind of snappy looking, huh? I've never seen one quite like it. No, it's quite new. It's reinforced and guaranteed not to turn inside out. Oh, then it's windproof, isn't it? And this strap fits around the wrist so it won't get blown away. Uh, Do you want me to carry your bumbershoe? No, I've got it, Mr. McLemore. It won't get away. Well, as I remember, there wasn't a speck of wind when we went up. Just the rain coming down, grass all wet, water standing around in puddles on the street. The colonel was standing on his front porch, smoking and pretending he was reading his newspaper. And Miss Keaton, she was walking along beside me with her head in the air, carrying the new windproof umbrella and pretending she wasn't seeing the colonel. Then it happened. I felt my hat leave my head. Then I looked down. There it was, skimming along the ground, and skimming along right beside it was Miss Keaton, flat on her back, being dragged along by a new umbrella, pulling up handfuls of the colonel's lawn with her free hand as she tried to stop. 
The wind was trying to humiliate her, all right. But I guess it hadn't figured on the kind of a man the colonel was. Oh, there. He, too. Hey, stop, I say. Here, you. Forget your hat. Lend me a hand here. Me? Yes, you. He, too. Hey, halt. Let go of the umbrella, miss. Come on. That's chance. has got it hooked on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got her. Uh, Unhook that umbrella. Oh, my. What a horrifying experience. Wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes. Uh, are you all right, miss? Any bones broken? Well, she's padded pretty good where she slugged. Uh, are you all right, miss? It did it deliberately. Deliberately. Big pardon, miss? She means the wind. The wind? A minute ago, there wasn't a speck of wind. Not a speck. It was a mean trick. A cruel, mean trick. I assure you, miss, if there were any way that Colonel Wayfield Byrne, retired, could see that you were avenged, we already done. It would be my pleasure to uphold the dignity as well as the honor of such a fine lady. A lady to whom I was just about to pay my respects before this unhappy incident occurred. Oh, very, very kind of you, Colonel. I am Miss June Ann Keating, and this gentleman is Mr. Avery McLemore. He, um, he's also retired. Howdy. My pleasure, Mr. McLemore. Now, Miss June Ann, if I might assist you to your door, I imagine that puddle you're sitting in is getting a mite chilly. Well, sir, you can imagine how Miss Keaton felt after a thing like that. But that wasn't the end of her trouble with the wind. Christmas come along a couple of months after that, and it was a cold one. But not so much for Miss Keaton. The colonel gave her a potted plant, hollyhock, I think it was, and about the ugliest thing I ever saw. But the getting of it sure warmed Miss Keaton's heart. She was prouder of that plant than a fox would be of a four-foot tail. So, naturally, there wasn't area place good enough for it except right in front of the big window in the parlor where it sat for all to see. She kept it there till the night of the storm. I can remember it like it was yesterday. The way the rain was coming down and the wind was howling around the house. But all the other folks in the house was asleep or getting... Keeping a secret. Well, they inclined to be a mite leaky. Mary Turnbow hadn't left for work two hours before things started to happen. So you see, Miss Keating, it kind of makes newspapers more interesting. Even the odd little things about it. Like this silly rumor that's going around the <laughs> about you having the, having the wind locked up in your garage. Well, you can see how silly that would be. How impossible. <laughs> yes. It would be. Huh? As one would think it would come out the cracks and under the doors and such. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, I thought of that and sewed it up in bed sheets before I put it in the garage. <laughs> bed sheets before you put it in the... <laughs> May I quote you, Miss Keating? I'd be flattered. <laughs> uh, youngster, huh? Oh, you mean me, old-timer? Yes. Now, why don't you put your ear to the garage door? Just for laughs. It's just around the corner of the house. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. That's a very interesting story of why you say you did it, Miss Keating. Well, you could say the wind started it. <laughs> Goodness knows I never could have. And this is the garage. And you've got the wind in there. That's right. Lay your ear alongside the door here. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. There weren't more than 15 or 20 people around for the first hour. They all seemed like nice folks just coming out of curiosity. Miss Keaton told her story over and over again, and she enjoyed it more every time herself. And the colonel just kept shaking his head and serving a kind of a minty-flavored beverage that seemed to kind of ward off the heat of the day. Then the papers come out with a whole story, and things change suddenly. Hey, stand back! Stand back, you all! Move back! I mean business! Now, in case some of you don't know it, you're trespassing, and this is the fouling piece I've got here. Looks more like a blunderbuss, Colonel. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Never mind you, sir. She's loaded with rock salt, and I don't want to have to use it. So just stand where you are, that's all. Have to have a little law and order around here, and right now, that's me. Making out all right, Colonel? Well, I could do with a little less heat, McLemore. 
If we could just get enough wind out of that garage to make a breeze... Want me to smell you for a while? No, sir. I shall not forsake my sacred trust, Mr. McLemore. I have the situation well in hand. Well in hand. Now, the colonel was no youngster. No, sir. Not by a long shot. But yet somebody had to stand guard. Seems like there was a lot of folks who were all for letting the wind out. Miss Keaton wasn't around to see that happen, so she kind of arranged to have the colonel relieved. And the way she did it kind of surprised us all. But most of all, it surprised the sheriff. But ma'am, I didn't come here to help you protect your property. I came to order you to release the wind. Release the wind, Mr. Sheriff? I got a writ of habeas corpus signed by Judge John Ames. You got to either release it or show just cause why it should not be interned and then turn it over to duly constituted authority, which is me. Writs is for people. That makes no difference. Can you describe the, uh, the subject you want released? Well, sure, it's, uh, well, it's what you might call a... Well, that's to say, it, uh, well, the wind is sort of... Why, uh, you know I can't describe it. Well, it appears to me you don't know what you came for, Sheriff. Hello, Miss Keating, Mr. McLemore. Isn't this terrible? Just terrible. Lady, it's a disgrace. Oh, is so? <laughs> may, I, may I borrow a fresh blouse? The television people want to interview me about all this. Mary, I don't suppose you'd know how all this got started, eh? Oh! goodness, no. Why, how should I know? Uh, the blouse, Miss Keating? My top bureau drawer, Mary. Oh, you're a peach. And I won't forget you when I'm a star. Isn't this all terrible? Now, once and for all, Miss Keating, you got to let the wind out of your garage. Once and for all, Sheriff, I demand protection from trespassers. Not in a thousand years. Better change your mind, Sheriff. Unless I miss my guess, the colonel's beginning to salt down some of the customers. Miss Keaton got her way. The sheriff figured that he'd better put some of his boys in there to save wear and tear on the crowd, which was getting bigger every minute. It took a little while before the whole world would believe the story. In fact, nobody outside of the state believed it until about three in the morning when one of them big radio networks come out and put a microphone right up against the side of the garage. Then a stir did come up. Why, the town was swamped with wires and phone calls from everywhere. And before noon the next day, people were flooding in from all parts of the country. No, no, let me go, madam. I've got no statement to make. Oh, Miss Keaton, there's some gentlemen from the South that'd like to have a word with you. Some uh, gentlemen from Virginia, uh, tobacco men. Want to see me? Yes, ma'am. They say they want to talk terms. Whatever would tobacco men want with me? Uh, smoking, ma'am. Not even possible to smoke a pipe, cigarette, or anything else. All the smoke you make just hangs there puff size in front of you with no wind to blow it away. Well, I didn't realize things like that would happen. Well, same thing's happening with automobile exhaust smoke. Why, people downtown are walking around up to the waist in the stuff. That's terrible. I don't know why. Stand back. Stand back and let this gentleman in, folks. Make way for the gentleman. Right this way, sir. Miss Keaton? This gentleman is, uh, what, what was that name again? Hastings, Bernard Hastings. Bernard Hastings. Miss Keaton, Colonel Bryan. Miss Keaton, Colonel Bryan. Bryan. How you? He's from the United Nations. Yes, that's right. It was voted unanimously this morning by all participating members of the UN that I come here, Miss Keating. Even Russia? Even Russia. I have come to ask you to, to, um... Release the wind from your garage. Well, I, I suppose I'll have to do something. You see, keeping it is working an untold hardship on the world. Already, many thousands of industries have closed down, as you doubtless know, because of either inability to operate air-cooled equipment or their inability to get rid of their industrial smoke. Shortly now, the agricultural picture will darken, too. Without wind, there can be no weather. And without weather, no rain. I don't think you have to say any more, Mr. Hastings. Now, I assure you that this country and all others concerned will do everything possible to see that you're no longer plagued, as you put it, by the wind. If you'll only... I, mean, I didn't mean to work any hardship on anyone. I will release it, Mr. Hastings. Well, how about that, Mr. McLemore? Very wise move. All right, wait, wait till I tell everybody. Hey, she's going to turn it loose. Miss Keaton's going to let the wind go. <laughs> Miss Keaton stopped by the kitchen, got the keys to the garage out of a drawer, and picked up a pair of knife. Then we all followed her out into the backyard. There were people everywhere. They were hanging off the telephone poles in the alley and on the rooftops all over the neighborhood. And there were a couple of television cameras on top of the buildings, too. Miss Keaton, 
for... Oh, Miss Keating, before you release the wind, is there any statement you'd care to make to our radio audience? Yes, yes, there is. Uh, speak right into the microphone, please. Now, perhaps you could tell us how you managed to trap the wind in the first place. Well, I think I'd better keep that to myself, but... But there is something I'd like to say. Just what would that be, Miss Keating? I'd just like to tell everyone that I I didn't mean to cause any trouble or, or work any hardship on anyone. I'm certainly sorry, and I won't do it again. Oh, oh you better all stand back, though. I don't know what's going to happen when I let it go. Uh, you all take cover. Miss Keating moved up slipped the padlock out of the hasp and opened the garage door. We could see the big bag made out of sheets the wind was in. Then she reached in with a pair of knife and slashed at the bag. Well, sir, the wind blew one of the garage doors clean off trying to get out in a hurry. But outside of that, there wasn't a speck of damage. And the whole world was back to normal inside an hour's time. Well, now, maybe I went too far saying the whole world was back to normal. Some things changed. Mary Turnbow got some kind of a contract out in Hollywood out of it. I got invited to be on this year's radio program to tell my story. And Miss Keaton, well, she did get over her trouble with the wind after all. Nobody's been able to get the wind to come within a mile of her since she turned it loose. <laughs> Scared to, I guess. And on the strength of that, she and the colonel have been invited to spend their honeymoon in Chicago next March. Of course, if they don't want to wait that long, they've been invited to the Middle West during the tornado season. And then there's another place that's worried about hurricanes where they wouldn't be unwelcome. <laughs> Fine woman, Miss Keaton. Ought to make the colonel a good wife. Well, that's my story. You know, Family Theater brings you this program each week for the one purpose of encouraging and promoting prayer throughout the world. We stress family prayer particularly, for the family is the firm stone upon which a nation is built. In these days when the nations of the world are in a topsy-turvy state, prayer is more important than ever before. I I'd like to read you a poem that appeared recently in one of our daily newspapers. We all have a secret weapon which can cure our deepest woes. It can tear down walls of hatred and confound our godless foes. It doesn't cost a billion dollars, yet can guarantee world peace. Not the A-bomb or the H-bomb, yet it makes the war drum cease. It's not guarded from the millions. Each of us can do our share. It grows stronger as you use it, for it's better known as prayer. Yes, prayer is the secret weapon which we all possess. And if we but use it, we can bring peace to the world, peace to the nation, and peace to our homes. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are up by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Wind is No Gentleman, starring Gene Lockhart. Pat Crowley was your hostess. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Charlotte Lawrence, John Daner, Ralph Moody, and Howard Culver. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Where There's a Will, starring Vincent Price. Rosalind Russell will be your hostess. Join us, won't you?
And now we suggest you stay tuned for John Holbrook bringing you the latest news on the newspaper of the air, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. about all this. Mary, I don't suppose you'd know how all this got started, eh? Oh, my goodness, no. Why, how should I know? Uh, the blouse, Miss Keating? My top bureau drawer, Mary. Oh, you're a peach. And I won't forget you when I'm a star. Isn't this all terrible? Now, once and for all, Miss Keating, you got to let the wind out of your garage. Once and for all, Sheriff, I demand protection from trespassers. Not in a thousand years. Better change your mind, Sheriff. Unless I miss my guess, the colonel's beginning to salt down some of the customers. <laughs> miss Keaton got her way. The sheriff figured that he'd better put some of his boys in there to save wear and tear on the crowd, which was getting bigger every minute. It took a little while before the whole world would believe the story. In fact, nobody outside of the state believed it until about three in the morning when one of them big radio networks come out and put a microphone right up against the side of the garage. Then a stir did come up. Why, the town was swamped with wires and phone calls from everywhere. And before noon the next day, people were flooding in from all parts of the country. No, no, let me go, madam. I got no statement to me. Oh, Miss Keating, there's some gentlemen from the South that'd like to have a word with you. Some uh, gentlemen from Virginia, uh, tobacco men. Want to see me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they say they want to talk terms. Well, whatever would tobacco men want with me? Uh, smoking, ma'am. Not even possible to smoke a pipe, cigarette, or anything else. All the smoke you make just hangs there puff size in front of you with no wind to blow it away. Oh, I didn't realize things like that would happen. Well, same thing's happening with automobile exhaust smoke. Why, people downtown are walking around up to the waist in the stuff. That's terrible. I don't know why. Stand back. Stand back and let this gentleman in, folks. Make way for the gentleman. Right this way, sir. Miss Keaton, this gentleman is... Uh, what, what was that name again? Hastings, Bernard Hastings. Bernard Hastings. Miss Keaton, Colonel Brown. Miss Keaton, Colonel Brown. How do you do? He's from the United Nations. Yes, that's right. It was voted unanimously this morning by all participating members of the UN that I come here, Miss Keating. Even Russia? Even Russia. I've come to ask you to... To, um, release the wind from your garage. Well, I, I suppose I'll have to do something. You see, keeping it is working an untold hardship on the world. Already, many thousands of industries have closed down, as you doubtless know, because of either inability to operate air-cooled equipment or their inability to get rid of their industrial smoke. Shortly now, the agricultural picture will darken, too. Without wind, there can be no weather. And without weather, no rain. I don't think you have to say any more, Mr. Hastings. Now, I assure you that this country and all others concerned will do everything possible to see that you're no longer plagued, as you put it, by the wind. If you'll only... I, mean, I didn't mean to work any hardship on anyone. I will release it, Mr. Hastings. Well, how about that, Mr. McLemore? Very wise move. All right, wait, wait till I tell everybody. Hey, she's going to turn it loose. Miss Keaton's going to let the wind go. <laughs> Miss Keaton stopped by the kitchen, got the keys to the garage out of a drawer, and picked up a pair of knife. Then we all followed her out into the backyard. There were people everywhere. They were hanging off the telephone poles in the alley and on the rooftops all over the neighborhood. And there were a couple of television cameras on top of the buildings, too. Miss Keating. Oh, oh Miss Keating, before you release the wind, is there any statement you'd care to make to our radio audience? Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, speak right into the microphone, please. Now, perhaps you could tell us how you managed to trap the wind in the first place. Well, I think I'd better keep that to myself. But but there is something I'd like to say. Just what would that be, Miss Keating? I'd just like to tell everyone that I I didn't mean to cause any trouble or, or work any hardship on anyone. I'm certainly sorry, and I won't do it again. Oh, hey, hey. Miss Keating moved up, 
slipped the padlock out of the hasp and opened the garage door. We could see the big bag made out of sheets the wind was in. Then she reached in with a pair of knife and slashed at the bag. Well, sir, the wind blew one of the garage doors clean off, trying to get out in a hurry. But outside of that, there wasn't a speck of damage. And the whole world was back to normal inside an hour's time. Well, now, maybe I went too far saying the whole world was back to normal. Some things changed. Mary Turnbow got some kind of a contract out in Hollywood out of it. I got invited to be on this year radio program to tell my story. And Miss Keaton, well, she did get over her trouble with the wind after all. Nobody's been able to get the wind to come within a mile of her since she turned it loose. (laughs) Scared to, I guess. On the strength of that, she and the colonel have been invited to spend their honeymoon in Chicago next March. Of course, if they don't want to wait that long, they've been invited to the Middle West during the tornado season. And then there's another place that's worried about hurricanes where they wouldn't be unwelcome. (laughs) Fine woman, Miss Keaton. Ought to make the colonel a good wife. Well, that's my story. You know, Family Theater brings you this program each week for the one purpose of encouraging and promoting prayer throughout the world. We stress family prayer particularly, for the family is the firm stone upon which a nation is built. In these days when the nations of the world are in a topsy-turvy state, prayer is more important than ever before. I'd like to read you a poem that appeared recently in one of our daily newspapers. We all have a secret weapon which can cure our deepest woes. It can tear down walls of hatred and confound our godless foes. It doesn't cost a billion dollars, yet can guarantee world peace. Not the A-bomb or the H-bomb, yet it makes the war drum cease. It's not guarded from the millions. Each of us can do our share. It grows stronger as you use it, for it's better known as prayer. Yes, prayer is the secret weapon which we all possess. And if we but use it, we can bring peace to the world, peace to the nation, and peace to our homes. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Wind is No Gentleman, starring Gene Lockhart. Pat Crowley was your hostess. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Charlotte Lawrence, John Daner, Ralph Moody, and Howard Culver. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Where There's a Will, starring Vincent Price. Rosalind Russell will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? And now we suggest you stay tuned for John Holbrook, bringing you the latest news on the newspaper of the air, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.